as, as you focus this morning on the words of our speaker um, that he's going to be sharing, it takes a few minutes yeah. to, to uh, get the cadence of his speech. But I promise you, you will focus and you will receive today. And, and I know you're going to be blessed by his testimony, by his ministry. God has used him to touch lives. And I believe he's going to do that today as well. Uh, many say that he is the most inspirational and motivational preachers of our time. Um, I will tell you, you've never heard a speaker like this man that you're going to hear today. For over 50 years, I'm not going to ask who's over 50 in the house because it's not many, I know. But for over 50 years, despite all odds, he has been passionately sharing the gospel of Christ to audiences all over the world. He's spoken, in hundred, spoken to hundreds of thousands of people across the country. He's not only known nationally, but he's known internationally through radio broadcasts and television broadcasts. He's been in thousands of churches. And I'm thankful today that he made the trip from the Nashville area all the way to Abounding Grace in Salina, Ohio. Amen? Can you do me a favor this morning and please help me give a great abounding grace welcome to our special guest and speaker one you'll never forget evangelist david ring as he comes he doesn't listen to me either brother Thank you. In all God's speed but check. In all God's speed but check. It's a joy to be able to come today to be with you. I, I've been doing this for 50 years. I know I don't look that old. Do I? Do I? Therefore, I started when I was two. Uh, and I've been all over the country. And I, I've been, I have spoken in every state of the Judean. Steve, can you bring a chill up here? You can move the poop. In two weeks, I am going to be 70. And when you are 70, you can do what you want to do. <laughs> if you want to stand up, you can stand up. If you want to sit down, you're going to sit down. Yes, and therefore, I'm sitting down today. <laughs> the state of being in and back. No, 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 no. If it does, get over it. <laughs> but I have spoken in every state. And I'm grateful. But I love Ohio. The bug eyed state. In fact, I'm not making this up any. But Ohio is one of the very bug states 
I came to you. I spoke. You don't, you don't need to know this, but I'm going to tell you. But I spoke at the Fall Hill Baptist Church in Dayton. But on Saturday night, it was standing room only with young people all over the state. And therefore, I did such a good job that night. I'm talking about 75, 76 before you were born. <laughs> but I did a, a good job that night, and, and a bunch of preachers were there. And they invited me all over the state. This state in Pennsylvania are my two biggest states that I've been to over the big years. But I love the book I'd state better. Come on now. Uh, I in fact, do you know oh how is my favorite state to be in? Let me say it one more time. Oh how is my favorite state to be in? Now, when I go to Georgia, I'd say Georgia. <laughs> Alabama. Whatever state I'm in, I'm content. Maybe. How many of you know by now? I have a speech impediment. I forgot I'm in Ohio. <laughs> Everybody in Ohio had a speech impediment. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't believe me, go down to Walmart. <laughs> Every time I go to Walmart, I, I think I'm in a Pentecostal. Church. <laughs> Everybody is speaking in unknown tongues. Yes. Yes, Somebody asked me 48 years ago that they be a uh, bad bitch. Yep, I am. They be the good speaking tongues. Yep, I do. They were speaking unknown tongues. Absolutely. Every time I open my mouth, they are unknown. How many of you never been to Walmart? If you've never been to Walmart, let me go in. Nobody. I've been asking that five years. I still can't find one person that never been to Walmart. I told my wife the other day, baby dog, when I die, Bear with me at Walmart. <laughs> she said, say what? When I die, bear with me at Walmart. She said, what for? I say, if I die and you bear with me in a dumb cemetery with a bunch of dead 
speed, boy. You will ever come see me. But if you build with me at Walmart, you will be there every day. And maybe twice a day. Can I get business? You say, Dave, what, what are you doing? What I'm doing now is breaking down walls. I never will forget being in Mobile, Alabama. 91-year-old elderly lady came up to me at the table. And she said, David, I've been here every night of the revival. I said, wonderful. And she said, David, I have a problem. I said, what's that? I can catch everything you are saying. I can understand everything. I say, ma'am, don't worry about that. I don't even understand <laughs> everything I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Thank God for, for being ill. I came all the way from Lynchburg. Uh, Virginia last night. 500 miles from Liberty University to Bed Fredston in Carolina. Now 501, now 499, Hundred miles. I drove that by myself. Are you impressed? I'm not. If you look at the word idiot in the dictionary, you will find my picture in 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 the dictionary under the word idiot. I will tell you one story, then I will get on with my mentions. That Sunday, I can't even believe I'm ill today. That Sunday morning, I spoke to 39 people and Philadelphia, PA. And we had a good time, even though they were a bunch of dead Baptists. <laughs> but we still have a good time. Yeah. On my way back to Lynchburg, it's six hours. And 74 mom from Lynchburg, on Albert 90, on 29, they were deal, D E E R, standing on the side of the road in the media. And about the time I'm with Get what he is, he move, and he jump right in front of my car. I told her my car. Told her, absolutely told her. If he jump nine inches, Higher, it will be in my lap. 
still to bring you. And the Steve will get a call and say, but the David always with the Lord. But thank God I'm walking. Thank God I'm talking. And if I go into overtime today, it's not my fault. <laughs> they came too long. I didn't say that. He did. You got your Bible today, but thank God I'm okay. I do. I did not. I did not even stop. I kept going. I did not know. People wouldn't know about the deal. They ate. They ate. Live or die. I don't know when, I don't care. <laughs> but God, I'm about my father's business. I know in whom I am believing. I am persuaded that he is able to keep me against that day. I'm from Arkansas. Anybody from Arkansas? I'm the only one from Arkansas. You know, Arkansas is the land of opportunity. And when I was 14 years old, I took my opportunity and I left. But I have the Arkansas look this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Numb teeth. <Yeah. laughs> Do you know how to pay somebody a compliment in Arkansas? Nine tooth. <laughs> Nine tooth. But last Wednesday, I got them all pulled. And this coming Wednesday, thank God, I'm getting a new mouth. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to start over and go 50 more years. You got the Bible today, come with me to the book of Revelation. Book of Revelation. Chapter 12. I see a good Bible belt loving Alabama fan. Did they win yesterday? What happened to them about two weeks ago? Huh? Somebody on the plane told me Alabama lost, and I shouted for joy. Hey, uh, you're welcome. Somebody asked me, they be, oh, 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 team, are you on, uh, what team do you like? I said, I picked my team after the game. <laughs> it's much easier on the heart. <laughs> Revelation. Chapter 12, verse 11. 
the Bible says they they the Bible says eat me off or cheat me off. Uh, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love them, they did not love themselves unto death. That's the King James Version, yeah? I'm a King James boy. Okay? They did not, uh, they overcame him, overcame, overcame the devil. If you are a child of God today, your number one enemy is not your spouse. If you are a child of God today, your number one enemy is not your mother-in-law. <laughs> Even though my come Real close. <laughs> and by the way, if you tell my mom, boy, I'd say, all I got to say, baby dog, they did not understand me. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> they overcame him, overcame the devil. The devil still kill in this story. The devil is your number one enemy if you are a child of God. Able to steal the joy away, able to kill you from the abundance and able to destroy you and everything you touch. Do you understand that? But thank God, being a child of God, we got the power to overcome the enemy, the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Now look at me. I love the blood, don't you? Yeah. There was power, power, wonder, working yeah. power in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. Walk and walk. Walk and walk. Oh, wait, no, King Kevin, church. What can make me or what can tell me, church? Oh, precious, is the bill that my wife has no, no, other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. If, if you are a child of God, you are whiter. Then no. And the number one line, the number one line, L I N E. The number one line the devil used on you. If you are a child of God, if they only knew. If they only knew, come on, come on. Yeah. knew what? Yeah. If they only knew, knew what? Um, if they only knew the way you've been living. Right. Yeah. If they only knew the way you've been thinking last night. Come on. Come on. If they only knew what you did behind closed doors. But thank God, 
the one and the only one that known you the best, love you the most. And you can overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. Number two, my last point, which is going to take me about 40 minutes. Huh? I know it's okay. If I drove 500 miles, if it takes two hours, it could be okay. I'm only kidding. Every one of you have a testimony. You don't have my story. I don't have your story. But we all have a story. And the older I get, the more I'm convinced. Uh, The more I tell my story, the more I overcome. Huh? The day I don't tell my story is the day I don't overcome. Let me break it down further. If I don't tell my story on Monday, I don't overcome. That's right. That's right. If I tell my story on Tuesday, I overcome. Yes. Yes. Do you understand me? The day you don't tell the story, you don't un- uh, you don't overcome. And I encourage you today to tell the story every single day. You say I can't. Why can't you? Well, my story is too long. No, it's not. Your story is two three words. May I tell you your story? Look at me. I'm going to tell you your story. Your story is I am blessed. Am blessed. You say, Pooja, you don't know what I've been through. No, I don't, but I know one day, today, October 15, you are blessed. You say, I don't feel blessed. I feel like I'm going through hell. Well, you may be going through hell today, but you are going through hell. Blessed. So let's tell our story together. I am blessed to you. I am blessed. One more time. I am blessed. Louder. I am blessed. One more time. I am blessed. One more time. Therefore, the next time somebody asks you, how you doing, say, I'm blessed. And leave out all the other details. They don't give a whip. It's better than church. Huh? I'm I'm afraid to tell uh, I'm afraid to ask church people how they doing. Number one, I'm afraid they're gonna tell me. Number two, I don't want to know. 
I hope you're doing well on my back, tell me. I hope you're doing so. I don't think I'm making today. Every little pain you go through, you keep worried me, worried me, worried my people, worried my life, worried my back, worried my head. Oh, get over it. Take your number and get a line. Many people think I have a handicap. No, I don't. I have a platform to tell my story, which is many people think. I have a disability, which I don't have a platform to tell my story, which is. I am. Many people tell me I have a problem. I don't have a problem. I have an opportunity to tell my story, which is I am. Many people. They got out a burden. I don't have a burden. I have a, a, a blessing to share with people. So we propose it's not a Burden. So we propose it's a blessing. May I prove it? May I? I'm the only man alive that been the full children. And never change Mundabo. <laughs> I'm blessed. <laughs> oh, my mom will give me, will, will have me, our baby, she will give me more every now and then and say, if you go change. The devil did on me. I how to be bald, and she was dumb enough to believe it. <laughs> Four children, five grandbabies, no doubt. Can anybody? Top that story. <laughs> Whoever tell you to be a party is from the devil, is a liar. God allowed me the privilege to be born dead for 18 minutes. 18 minutes dead when I was born. Now, my mom was dying on the delivery table. And then for my body, my dead body, I'm dead. On my table against the wall. And I lay on the table for 18 minutes. 18 minutes is a long time. I'm not supposed to be ill today. I'm supposed to be a vegetable. Huh? But I'm not a vegetable. But do you know why? 
but got it not over until God say it's over. It's not over until God say it's over. God had another plan for me. When I was 11 years old, my daddy got sick. And two weeks later, my daddy died of cancer of the liver. Well, I'm the baby of the family. I'm the baby of eight. And I'm not only the baby of the family, but I'm an age number one mom, but boy, you can tell by looking at me. I'm a mom boy. Because I got the mom baby bites. <laughs> you know, the bite only a mom can love. <laughs> You've been there too, huh? Boy, many of you look like you've been beaten with a oak egg stick. <laughs> you know what I mean? You see why you ain't got no alibi, you ugly. <laughs> you might be blessed, but you're still ugly. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that. He told me to tell you that. I will never say that. But being the baby of the family, my mama and being born with cerebral palsy, my mama, uh, uh, mama overcompensated everything I did. If you are on mom today, you will understand this better than I do. My mom bad me every meal. Because every time I put my food on my fork, on my spoon, ever off, I, I'm not talking about 11 months old. I'm talking about 11 years old. 30 years ago, my mom fed me. My mom bed me. My mom clothed me. My mom talked to me. Uh, uh, every time I, I'm in the, uh, I'm in public and, and, open, and somebody asks me a question, I, I, I want to answer it. My mom talk for me because my mom don't want me to be in their books. And if you, if you are a mom today, you will understand that. But I love my mom. I learned two years ago. I learned two years ago. I, I said my uh, but what at the age of five? I thought it become a cerebral palsy, but it wasn't. It become my mama. <laughs> my mom did everything for me. One day in my life, my mom got sick. And my mom me in the hospital. And my mama had the operation on the neck, and, and, and two months later, July 1968, my, the doctor came to my family and said, your mom will never come home again. She had cancer. She had six months at the month to live. I thought, no, 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 my mama. My mom not gonna die. My mom told me every day, David, I won't abandon you. I will always be there. I, I will never abandon you. I will always defend you. I will always love you. I will always be there. My, 
man man nan gun da ich ich war in fact, tomorrow at 2.01 a.m. 1968, my mom took a lot of breath. And when my mom died, everything I believed in went out the window. My mom loved me, but my mom lied to me. My mom told me I would never have been you, but she did. I, I will always be you, but, but every, time I, every time I go outside and go to school and, and go to my local people, go look, put their finger and say, look, the boy boy, but look, the boy come and look, the boy can do nothing. It, it's not fun to be my fun of. And I could not go home to my mama. And I could not say, Mama, come in my front of me. Mama could not pull her arm around me and make her bed. But look at me, I, I would be good at lay, lay in bed every day, every night, with tears rolling down my face, begging to die of mine because I was lonely. I, I was so lonely, I, I, I wanted to die. I attempted suicide every other day for two years. But I'm alive. Because it's not over until God says it's over. And I went to live with my sister in Kansas City. And, and, and my sister built me a bedroom down in the basement. My sister had three children and a husband. And, and I was only 14. She was 28. But my own biological sister molested me for two years. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, listen to me. I, I, I'm so ashamed that is in my journey. I live under the guilt, under the, uh, under the condemnation uh, and the shame. And, and, and my sister told me for two years, David, uh, you know I love you. You know I opened the door for you. Uh, you know nobody from you. I'm the only one I love you. I'm the only one that you come in and live. And David, if you tell anybody, I'm going to kick you to the shop. And people, I feel like a piece of trash. I come back. I feel under guilt and shame on my life. But thank God I can't stop there because but God had another Plan. She was coming in the room, man. I was leaving the room. I went outside. I walked up the hill. I walked two blocks. I found me a church. They were having a revival. Uh, and I walked in. And I, man, I walked in with the Steve, I believe with all my heart, I believe with all my heart, God stood up in the balcony of heaven and said, Yep, you wrong time. Today is the day of your salvation. I'm going to change 
you laugh forever and the Bible says when somebody gets saved and you will go, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yes. And yet it was among the angels. My mama, duh, my daddy, and God called all the angels over and said, come here, Wanga, you won't believe me. See the boy over there? He is sixteen years old. He is lonely. Look at him. He don't even think I like him. He don't think I love him. But tonight, I'm going to turn that boy every which way but loose. And I ain't going to strike up the band. Because a big boy is going to be Save at the altar tonight. Yeah. And I believe with all my heart, I believe with all my heart, when I turn and put my feet toward the altar, I believe God salvation became in me. I became a brand new creation. Yeah. Uh, on April 17th, 1970, at 8.45 p.m., since the standard time, I became a child of God. I became a new Creation, God do with my old thing, gave me new thing, God do with my loneliness, gave me a heaven, God do with my sorrow, and gave me joy unspeakable and full of glory. Look at me, I still walk with the lamp. Still company for all the joy, the blood man show. I still have to be a party, but thank God to be a party. Don't want me. Maybe you will understand this. For 49 years, I stayed to preach. 49 years, I stood to preach. And I never will forget the day that I had to sit down. Now let what the girl would walk out. Because that what you're doing. Let what her. If she walked by then, we could watch her. Huh? I'm doing my best. Trying to communicate with you. And every time you move, you distract somebody thinking, yes. hey, help me, but look at me, look at me. The first time I sit down to preach, I thought I was giving up. Just to sit down. Today, I still think I'm giving up. 
That's the way I think. Because the Bible says I can do all things through Christ which joins me. And I love to be standing up. But thank God, God gave me a brain. And my brain said, sit down, boy. You stood long enough. You, I outspoken to over 8,000 different churches. Think about that. Eight thousand preachers told me I, I'm not going to make it. I've been doing it 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. I may not make it. <laughs> they say, nobody will invite you to preach. I only spoke in eight thousand different churches. And all I got to say to the preachers who told me I never would make it, all I got to say, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I wonder what they do now. I wonder what they did in 1989. When they turned on the TV and saw me on the uh, Dr. Jerry Falwell, the old time God for hour. I was with Dr. Falwell 18 times in a row, 18 years. You won't touch me. I will with God Haiti. Do you know God Haiti? Yes, yes. And Steve, nobody in America loved Israel more than God Haiti. Right. Yes, I've, I've, I've been with John, you know the big preacher on TV. Yeah. 8,000 people a journey. I've been with John 21 times. You won't touch me. Yeah. I've been, I wonder what they did, I wonder what the person did when they turned on the radio and, and heard me on focus on the family with Dr. Dobson, family talk. I wonder what they did. Let me tell you what one person did. My own pastor called me up and said, David, I, I heard you today. I, you would, I was driving down the highway and I turned on the radio and, and I heard you and speaking on, focused on the family. And I was crying so hard, I had to pull off uh, on the shoulder because my tears were blinding me. Yes. Yes. And David, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I said, don't need to preach because you did so much, man, made me who I am today. The devil means it for evil, but God means it for good. And all you were doing, preacher, was you were all so concerned that churches would step on me and, and grab me in the floor. But uh, you, you were concerned and you want to warn me, don't do it. But when you say to me at the altar, 
Davy, you will ever make it. My faith lit up. And my faith said, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I'm still doing it. And if I live until uh, January 7, 2024, I will uh, go into my 51 year of ministry. I never been on staff. I never been on paper. I go to churches, only, only love offers. Do you know what that is? Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. That means if you don't give, I don't eat. Duh. I don't know why I'm going to get to this. I don't have a clue what you're going to get me to this. But I know one day I'm having the time of my life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I could be a welfare. Yeah. I could be a Totally disability. Yeah. You could be paying my way whether you want to or not. <laughs> but I'm not on welfare. I'm not on totally disability because I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. And I don't want a government to take care of me because my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I don't even know what I need yet. Well, God does. And God knows your heart. And if you don't give to a ministry, that's okay. Because somebody else will in Savannah, Georgia, a week now. And they will get your blessing. Duh. Church, look at me. It's time to get out of the stands. It's time to get on the playing field. It's time to get the lead out and put the load in. It's time to get off your blessed account. Do you understand me? Yeah. But God state, do you understand me? It's time to quit giving God your excuses. Come on. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't have any. Right. None. Right. Whatsoever. You want to talk about your pain? Come on. Yeah. Come on. I will put you under the table any day of the week yeah. and twice on Sunday. Yeah. Right. Right. If you were in my pain today, you will not be here. But I'm here. I drove 500 miles 
Because I love people. And may I seek to be a Lord at the altar. God, if you can use me with sweep palsy, I'm available. Now let me ask you something. May I? May I? I have to be the party. What's your problem? What are you doing for God today? Can you do more? Why aren't you? Why, why are you complaining? Why are you whining? Huh? It's only 10, 27 in Nashville. My wife will get out of the church in one hour and, and, and three minutes. And I try every week to get out at the same time. My wife gets it out. <laughs> what are you doing? Why, why do you need to be spoon fed? Why are you whining? Don't, don't whine, but shine. People come up to me and say, Peter, don't you want, don't you want to be normal? I look at them, I say, what's normal? You think you're normal? <laughs> you got a long way to go, buddy. And some of you younger make it. I don't want to be normal. I want to be just like I am. How many of you got your own YouTube? China. I do. I got over 25 videos on YouTube. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and every now and then I watch one and I was pretty good in my younger days. But I'm still amazed that God is still using me. Last Monday morning, bring you up to date. Last Monday morning, I could call your preacher. And say, preacher, I'm not going to go anymore. I can't do it by myself anymore. But God, for let the animal got in my way. And I, I don't have anything to prove, preacher. I done all I can. I put 50 years on my belt. And people, I give them to you, but the, your people would say that just like the old David, I'm so sorry. 
of people will meet you, but we understand. Nope. I'm not going to go there. That's right. That's right. I never stay on for my own family. And I bore like a deal. Not going to keep me on. That's right. Because my wife told me, you've got so many guardian angels around you call, mind them with each up a little bit and give them vacation time. You are overworking them every time you leave Lynchburg. But I, I still got that passion that I had at Ball Hill Baptist Church. In 1975. That man can add movies of my life. Now, will you want to touch me? <laughs> um, did you? If I died today on the road, the movie still couldn't come out. The name of the movie is The Boy Born Dead. The Boy Born Dead. I got a book on the table. I can see my table, I think. And I got 25 books on that table. And I want every one of you to go by the book. The name of the book is The Boy Born Dead. I read the movie. And I want you to go by the book. They only $20 each. If you want to, they are forty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> right. Duh. Yeah. And after the movie come out, you can sell the book on eBay <laughs> and make a boatload of money. <laughs> why, why do I even fool with the why do I even ship and do you? Because I know many of you, I know all of you have a thing that you wanted to be here today. And you say, if my people only be ill, they will understand what everything all about. Well, that's why the book is on the table for you to go by to read the book yeah. and then give it away. October 15th. Somebody Mind get encouraged before they do the stupid thing that black blow their brains out with the gun. The book might take somebody life. You can, you can call it anything you want to. But I've been in a long enough, I know everybody. 
everybody need to be encouraged. May I tell you what I've yet to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And promise not to tell my wife. <laughs> promise yeah. I'd stop by a gas station named Sheets. And I bought, I bought a bag of potatoes. To eat on the road. I'm by myself. My breath can smell anything I want to smell like. I'm by myself. Uh, and when I start bumping bubble, a teenage girl, 18 years old, Oh, I got this. And she put, 80 years old, she put a credit card on the credit card machine uh, and, and it took it. I said, ma'am, I got money. She said, I know, but you've been a blessing to me. I said, I don't think I know you, you don't. I'm not important. But I wanted to buy this bag of chips for the man of God that blessed my life so many different ways. I did not even know the girls were in the store. And the cash register got so chilly up. Started crying. And smiling at the same time and say, I've been working here for a long time. Nobody ever did that. Who are you? I said, not important. I said, remember that girl? If you ever see her again, I won't ever, I did, I, I did not know her. I did not stay around to get to know her. She left. She finished into being ill. All because God wanted me to know. David, I still got your back. Huh? They told me I would never find a wife. But I did. <laughs> uh, September 5th, 1981, I do at the altar of a church, and I said, I do, she said, I do, and we did. <laughs> and, and we've been doing it for 42 years. It's legal. They told me I would never be a daddy. But five weeks after, after the date, my mom called me up and said, Babe, I went to the doctor today, and I'm pregnant. I said the most stupid thing a husband could say to a wife. I said, How could that be? <laughs> she picked up on that and said, I don't know. Tell me, big boy. Every time I look at my wife, she got pregnant. 
happened to both one. I broke one of my arms like this. Baby, I love you. I'm not looking at you, but I love you. But God is good. God is faithful. Whatever you are going through today, it's going to be okay. You have already overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. When I got saved, I'm, I'm on the base right now. I'm going home right now. Going to home place. I've been to Bucks. I was all over Bucks. I was on Jacob. Now I'm on third. And I'm making the last turn to you today. When I got saved, the school numbers, they had to change. And they had to call an old school assembly. And they wanted me to stand on stage and tell them what happened to me. I got on stage that day. I said, to the body. I went to a old fashioned revival. I gave my life to God. I don't want to stand that, but I know one day I don't want to die anymore because I found someone worth living for. Number two, I found I'm worth dying for. Number three, I found out I'm not okay, but that's okay. Uh, 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 God loved me anyway, and that's the last chapter of the book. I'm not okay, but that's okay. God loved me anyway. But you know what they did? They both me to be the most popular boy in that student party. I went from a Shibo to King David overnight. They voted me to be ministered good spirit. They voted me to be the, um, uh, the bad president of my class. I even beat out a good looking cheerleader. <laughs> and I got the yearbook to prove it. I'm the only 70 year old man. You know that man I was. Uh, 52 years that still got the yearbook on the carpet table. <laughs> that was the body in the other I said, hang no. Leave it on the carpet table. I'm all over the yearbook. I, I'm on every other page. Leave it on the carpet table. Yes, they did not know the number one job. The bad friends they did were pick out pictures to put in the yearbook. That's why I'm on every other page. That's why I'm throughout the yearbook. I might be dumb, but not stupid. But I, feel, I believe with all my heart, God started to give back to me what the devil stolen from me. They probably mean to be football basketball and try manager of the year. Uh, my job was to carry two five gallons I'm going to make it. 
if I fall, my attorney will call you in the morning. <laughs> I didn't believe I'd said that. <laughs> my, my job was to cover two five-gallon buckets of water to the football team. And by the time I get to the team, my water be all dumped out. <laughs> And you know what they did? They started laughing. Not at me, but with me. Yeah. Yeah. And they finally said, now, that's what living for. Yeah. If God could do that to him, God can do that to me. And God used my life in two months to change a old high school, a public high school for him. And you know why I am today? a manager of people. The manager of people. Because I love people. And people, if God can use me, God can use you. I know my preach long, too long. No, he only 1048, 1048 in Nashville. That's right. That's right. Yeah. On my body time. But, 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 but let me ask you the four questions on time here. Yeah. Number one, What do you what are you doing with your life? Number two What are you doing with your life about the King of my God? Number three, I will wait on you, Father. I will wait on you. Don't come. Thank you. I will wait on you on this one. Number three, can you do more? Can you do more? of the kingdom. Number four. What keeps you from doing more? I gave you all I had today and then some. And people, it's my prayer to die on stage. That's why I got off the stage. <laughs> Good kids. But it was a good 
and blood. Eight minutes. Big morning. Good take your lap forever. And we all go to stand. We all go to stand. Nobody going to sing. Nobody. N don't stand now. <laughs> That's only the place team. They don't have me over time. But nobody, nobody going to sing. I tell you why. Because I am a everyone of be. Every one of you who's not doing all you can do but the kingdom of God. I will turn your feet to a owl and get out into the owl and come to the picture. And say, preacher, I'm making myself more available to God. And think about the cheek. Think about the cheek. I want everyone to be, everyone to be, I'm not doing all you can. I want to come in to the preacher and say, preacher, I'm not doing all I can, but today I'm making myself more available. Don't go come and, and, and shake hands. Don't go to this. You can do that at the door. But you need to open your mouth and say, I'm making myself more available to God. I sing a song on YouTube with Bill Gator. You won't touch me now. <laughs> Long story, too long to tell, but Bill heard me on TV, on, on, on the old of God Bible. He said, David, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to come to Indiana in two weeks and sing victory in Jesus. 10,000 people will be there. I said, Bill, I can sing. He said, David, I know you can sing. I heard you last night. But whatever you did before, what you do it for me. And it was something like this. Do you know victory in Jesus? Do you? Huh? You can sit down. <laughs> Give me an intro beneath the cleansing blood. I heard the old story How a Savior came From glory How he gave it up Oh, Calvary To save us Like we 
I hug about is for me of a place of blood. Oh, to me, be now we pick it up, my king, and want the big to be. Oh, but we is it my savior forever? He loved me. And bought me with his feeding me blood. He loved me. I knew him. And all my love is to him. He put me to victory beneath the glinty. Why, mine got blood that I don't know. Well, I know one thing. If God can do it by me, God can do it by you. I love you. Do you know that? I love you. 